Um, I'm just going to say a couple words about the show. Um, some years ago, uh, the Palestinian critic Faisal Darraj argued that the dreams of the oppressed are the nightmares of the colonial world. Uh, we are realizing more and more what this means. Uh, but last April and May, we also learned that the dreams of indebted students cultivated both inside and outside of classrooms are the nightmares of university administrators um, and by extension, the American ruling class. The spread of encampments first across New York City and later around North America and some pockets of the global south brought into short relief the contradictions of our contemporary university. One, where they pay rhetorical credence to free speech, diversity, equity, and inclusion, sometimes even decolonization. Um, and in practice, they work tirelessly to intimidate and silence students who dare to protest Israel's ongoing genocide of the Palestinian people in Gaza, as they call the NYPD special response unit to arrest those who demand the disclosure and divestment from war and occupation. There's a really powerful political analysis of the encampment movement written by my friends um, of the writing collective, The Bad Side. Um, it's in the show, I encourage you all to read it. Um, I echo their sentiment that, quote, nothing so far has worked, end quote, by which we mean no march, rally, direct action, op-ed, art exhibition, library poetry reading. <laughs> um, <laughs> or political lobby has successfully brought um, an end to the Israeli war machine um, or to the American tax dollars that fund it. Um, by the same measure, I think, quote, nothing has struck back at the matrix of imperial interests and ideologies with the force, breadth, and fearlessness of the students and their allies, end quote. And I think, in part, it's because the university um, has financial ties in genocide, which makes it a good target, um, an institution um, that uh, has a community that surrounds it, a uh, community can make what I understand are reasonable demands um, from the institution. But more broadly, I think um, the university is a place where, and I'm gonna invoke um, a rather unconventional friend here, um, the Gould Plaza Wall, which reminds us that uh, this is where the future takes shape. <laughs> Um, it seems that the struggle, uh, it's precisely here, over the sorts of future this generation is able to dream and imagine against the material, ideological, and repressive forces that are mobilized to chase away the dreamers. The university can, indeed it has, built walls, erected barricades, placed checkpoints, and issued new policies, all with the objective of silencing students. Um, but I've come to understand, and this is really my inheritance from a 75-year-old tradition of Palestinian defiance, that dreams are not easily defeated or vanquished. Um, so the heart of this exhibition is 80 anonymous postcards from members of our community arranged along a 10 meter wall. This is where the future that I, we want is taking shape. Um, almost all these images are ones we've seen before. Um, so I ask you to try to hear the voices that are animating them. The encampment was not a utopian place still Many choose to narrate the transformative force of the community coming together in new ways. Some offer critical commentary on the contradictions, the miscalculations of student organizing. There were many mistakes that we must learn from. Some reflections acknowledge the importance of quotidian acts, hearing the word Palestine spoken by so many different people, 
the exchange of casual glances of recognition with people wearing a kofiya on the streets. Some postcards testify to the living archive of Palestinian culture, the writings of the organic intellectual and the martyr Basil al-Araj, the poetry of Mahmoud Darwish, the songs of Sheikh Imam, the artworks of Hilmi Tuni and Kamal Bulata, um, the films of the Palestine Film Unit. Others still consider the reality in Gaza in light of Israel's ongoing genocide, reminding us of what we are fighting for. My intention is not to commemorate, memorialize, or lionize the student intifada or the encampments. No one here thinks that the students are heroes. We all recognize that what we do is a drop in the ocean compared to those resisting Israel's war of total obliteration. My intention is to allow space for the movement to represent itself on its own terms, to defend solidarity, to insist that we must become numerous, and to offer materials that can propel the movement forward. So take as many postcards as you want and distribute them. Uh, we hope that come early December, this room will be empty. Um, from our campus to our workplace, um, to the streets and open spaces, the ones that remain. Um, <laughs> let our images and words multiply, distributing the collective energy of protest against genocide and reverberating the refusal of our collective complicity. Um, I'm th I think I'm someone who always wants to do the right thing. Um, and frankly, I think the right thing to do in this space a um, couple months ago was not clear um, to me. And so um, when I began conceptualizing the show, I had many conversations with people who heard out my early ideas. Um, as I start to accumulate more and more perspectives, it sort of crystallized to me that what this needs to be is a collective voice that incorporates the multiplicity. Um, and so for the early conversations, thank you to the Bard crew. I will name them Adam, Haytham, May, Noor, May, Smejd. Um, and to others, Kalim, Bayan, Yezan, Amin, Sam, Naz, Yara, Jack, Raz, uh, Tooth. Um, secondly, I thank the many people who helped to pull the show together. Absolutely fabulous architects, Anas Elinim, who made the drawings. <laughs> who made the drawings of uh, Gold Plaza and Green Walkway. Um, to Farah, not this one, but the other one, um, uh, who supported on the exhibition design, and Andrew, um, who helped me to photograph um, the space um, around NYU, um, the photos that didn't make it into the show. Thank you to Dylan Saba, who gave me a crucial pep talk when I was starting to back down. Thank you to Sarah Nicole, who spared me the tremendous burden of coming up with a title. Thank you to Ahmad um, for reminding me of the responsibilities that Ghazans feel to tell their story, for showing me with new eyes um, that nothing in New York City is normal. Um, thank you to some of my Palestinian friends who argued that it's not the time for this type of work. I hope and trust that you will recognize that this is, um, with utmost sincerity, what I feel I can contribute to the movement, however small and however insufficient a gesture. Thank you, Khaled, not here, um, who showed me um, that I would be among those condemned to hope. Um, thank you to my parents, my family, Lorenzo, promptly receive a video recording. Um, uh, thank you my, to my department, uh, to Paula, to Nick, to everyone else. Um, thank you, the team at APA, Amita, Laura, uh, Crystal, um, Hella, Damien, Sandy, Jacqueline, Daniela, Chris, um, for making this floor a hospitable place for me. Um, last but not least, um, thank you to the movement, to contributors to the show, and everyone um, fighting for Palestinian liberation with whatever means available to them. 
Oh, this is long. Um, so um, I'll say the very last thing for the sake of accountability. I've donated the honorarium from the fellowship to support initiatives by members of our community, uh, providing immediate relief to people in Gaza and Lebanon. I encourage others who are able uh, to also make contributions. The Palestinian Youth Movement has a People Stand with Gaza fundraiser. The QR codes are here. Um, other fundraisers from Lebanon. Um, that you can contribute to. Um, and now, <laughs> um, I'll introduce my dear friend, Farah Barqawi, who will be sharing a few words to just end um, our little um, sit down part of the evening. Uh, Farah is a Palestinian writer, educator, performer, and feminist organizer. She works across uh, multiple genres and mediums, from written words to podcasts, singing, and theatrical performances. Her poetry and prose have appeared in multiple languages, both online and in print. She was the co-founder of two very prominent um, feminist projects in the Arab-speaking world, Wiki Gender and the Uprisings of Women in the Arab World. She ho holds an MFA in creative nonfiction writing from NYU. Okay, done with the uh, official biography. Uh, but m more so than that, I think, um, I invited Farah here uh, today because she's someone who's really taught me um, the power of real community support in this moment and the humility of seeking and demanding that from friends. Uh, thank you so much. This is overwhelming uh, and over overwhelmingly beautiful. I am known to be like not the best English speaker and I always correct myself at the microphone, so enjoy that. Um, uh, Wow. Okay, so a few things. I met Nadine for the first time when I moved to New York. It was uh, fall 2021 uh, at where I used to live in Crown Heights. She came in the middle of uh, whatever night uh, bringing um, uh, a couple of books with her. I was like, who's this nerd? Uh, <laughs> and she forgot one, uh, and I kept it. Um, uh, poetry by Etel Adnan, and I didn't tell her until like uh, maybe last semester. I was like, I have your book, and you have small notes in it. And I was like, this person is interesting. I want to know her more. So I'm very happy that we're three years in um, a relationship of like learning and friendship and uh, yeah, mutual support, which is uh, all what we need, I think, at the moment. And this exhibition, I also encourage you to steal as many. <laughs> I was like taking the postcards and then uh, one of the people in there was like, there is enough, you can go now, do your talk and it will not be, <laughs> we will keep, <laughs> I think, hello, like, we will uh, refill, so don't worry, take as many as you want. Um, yeah, so thank you Nadine for bringing me here, I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, I, I don't know what is the mood for, so I don't want to uh, bring uh, sadness to the room, but I'll, um, I'll, do, um, I'll do a couple of things, um, I guess. Okay, so I'll start, I'll start with a piece that uh, was published in Mizna, called New Habits. Uh, I wrote it in Arabic at the beginning uh, of the genocide and it was uh, translated by my uh, friend and colleague, Sarah Al Kamel. Um, this piece is currently, uh, it, it, it is dating, it dates back to November 12th last year, but it's the same since then, so nothing really has changed. And I dedicated also to, currently, to my Lebanese friends, uh, because I think uh, we feel the same and we're living the same things. Um, it's about my mother, who is in Gaza at the moment, in, in Gaza City. My mother was not the only one to pick up new habits as a massacre unfolded in Gaza, her beloved city, over the past month. 
I too was forced to acclimate to new activities in my distant exile in New York City. First, daily acrobatic leaps between two time zones separated by seven long hours. Sleep is restless and waking hours are tinged with sleep. I exist in limbo, nothing but her survival and the survival of those sheltering with her will allow me to escape. No light can enter this void until the sun rises where she is. Only then can I fasten my eyes briefly before waking up, uh, waking back up to be with her. Second, disarray and destruction. In other words, a clear lack of demarcation between where I eat and where I sleep between my outside and inside clothes and a deliberate carelessness towards the state of my room, my closet, my kitchen, and my backpack. The destruction I witness across the screen and which continues to assault my mind and heart has prompted a newfound apathy towards any and all appointments, plans, and details. Third, a new morning routine. The massacre has reinstated a school-like system where my mother is the teacher and I am the only student. I await her daily dispatches so I can edit and publish them. I get this homework done quickly, afraid any tardiness would disappoint the teacher. When I complete the task, I eagerly await a gold star on my forehead or God bless you, or bravo, onwards, inscribed in my notebook. But on days like today, when there is no contact or communication, no writing, no editing, no homework, no gold stars, I am overcome with the nagging feeling that I must have forgotten to do my homework. If only my mother could cover for me, keep the teacher from knocking off any marks. To console myself, I remind myself that it is the weekend and that the teacher is my mother. Once she returns to the classroom, there is no doubt that she will assign me more homework, which I will break my neck to deliver by the deadline. No crying. <laughs> My mother is still alive. <laughs> and um, I mean, and many mothers are, uh, we lose every day and we maintain living also. Um, this was written actually on the day that the communications were cut for the first time. So that's why I, I mentioned the communication disruption. and. What I'm gonna read now is something related to this gathering indirectly. It's the epilogue to my thesis, actually, which I finished my MFA uh, with um, the, back in the spring. And it's, it was written, <laughs> it was very, <laughs> don't clap for that. <laughs> I don't know how I finished, but. <laughs> um, so it is uh, carrying numbers that are not, uh, up to date, and I will keep it like that because it speaks to the moment, okay? And I think that uh, everything we do matters. As a Palestinian from Gaza, I know that people there really, their spirits at least are like need, need us to be doing stuff and writing also. So, um, 200 days of quick killing, slow killing, direct killing, indirect killing, declared killing, disguised killing, individual killing, mass killing, killing on land, killing by sea, killing by air, killing by suffocation, killing by disease, killing by hunger, killing by heartbreak, killing by shock, killing by unfathomable, unfathomable loss, killing, 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 and just killing. I'm writing this on the 23rd of April, 2024. 34,183 Palestinians have been killed in the Gaza Strip. More than 7,000 are still missing under the rubble of their demolished homes and shelters or in undiscovered mass graves. 
77,143 have been injured, 2 million people have been displaced, 360,000 homes have been partially or completely destroyed since the 7th of October 2023. Despite all of this horror, up until this moment, I still consider myself lucky. My mother is still alive and didn't leave her city, Gaza, as well as my family members who remained with her. The building where Mama lived before the genocide was affected by multiple nearby strikes and flying burning sharpnels, but is still standing and her apartment is still habitable. She dreams daily about going back to live in her home when and if the Israeli assault on Gaza stops. Other family members, childhood friends, my mother's colleagues are either still living in displacement in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip or have managed to escape the hell of the genocide and leave to Egypt or other countries, some due to holding dual citizenships and some due to paying thousands of dollars per person to an Egyptian company called Hala that after the approval of the Egyptian government and the Israeli side coordinates the exit of Palestinians through the Rafah crossing. 200 days and the genocide is ongoing, but the steadfastness and the resistance on the inside is also ongoing. The solidarity on the outside is ongoing and growing more, at least here in New York City, where I am writing these last words, I can tell that a lot has changed. I see Palestine in the faces, kofiyas, and chants of people each passing day. Students at multiple universities in the US have been protesting the complicity of their academic institutions in supporting Israel and asking them to disclose their assets and divest from the Israeli economy and institutions. To make sure their demands are heard and satisfied, these students establish encampments in solidarity with Gaza on the grounds of their campuses. Up till this day, four of these encampments have been taking place around me. Columbia University, the City University of New York, the New School, and New York University, where I am pursuing my MFA. Despite the repetitive attempts to crack down on them, the students in these encampments and others around the US are refusing to leave. The killing and destruction are ongoing. I have to finish my thesis to earn this MFA, which took me longer than I expected because the world I know was set on fire in fall 2023. Working on my graduation project felt impossible then. Finishing a thesis and graduating as if nothing has changed also felt like a betrayal to my mother and to my people who needed my support and attention. They needed my support, not rhetorically, but in more direct and immediate ways, fundraising for people in Gaza, staying connected to them, and lifting their spirits, and editing, translating, disseminating my mother's dispatches. The genocide is ongoing. It might stop any minute. It might go on for a year or more. Our individual Palestinian stories, collective memory, and resistance to erasure are also ongoing. They will never cease. We will not stop loving our loved ones. We will not stop grieving the ones we lost. We will remain angry at those who have killed and betrayed us. And we will not stop striving for liberation, no matter what they do to us. Despite death and loss, and without any doubt or fear, we hold on to the resilience, love, and a very deep faith in our human right to a life that is nothing less than a dignified life. Thank you so much. We're here at this beautiful exhibit, feeling really touched by the commemoration of a year of struggle and mourning and resistance and just really honored to see an example of like all of the, the work that we've done the past year. I think what Nadine has pulled together is nothing short of a communal um, 
exercise in solidarity, really exhibiting like the, the sort of ways that the broader NYU community and like NYC community and global community as well um, have shown up in the face of um, occupation and um, war. Tremendous morale boost to sort of take a moment to reflect and reassess and spend time with the ephemera and photos and memories of what the student movement has been able to do and the work that we have left ahead of us. So I'm just really happy to be here and be surrounded by such amazing people for this uh, opening.